Hello everyone, the Extra Notes version 3.5 is at least with the new inflate system and other important updates. So let's discuss them one by one. So let's start with the inflate system. Uh, this system allows you to inflate any mesh geometry with the full artistic controls. Okay, so let's see it is working. So let's add a plane. You can use this node for any geometry, whether it is uh, 2D or 3D. Okay, for the demonstrations, I'm using this plane. So first we need to subdivide this uh, because it works on the polygon basis. Okay, so let's add the geometry nodes modifier. So you can add this node uh, from here or you can add that node uh, from the admin. So if you set up the extra nodes as SL library in the blended preference, so you can add these nodes from the SL browser. Okay, if we add that node to this and run the simulation see it is inflating the surface okay now let's discuss the settings of this the first setting is the simulation here you can define the start and end frame for the simulation then you have the inflate settings so these are the main settings uh, to control the inflating process the first is the inflate weight so by default it's set to one that's why it is inflating the whole geometry however you can define this weight with the image textures with maps or with the file of nodes so let's use the noise texture to define this weight and let me also add the noise texture here and let's see the contrast maybe three and zero or something like that so if we rerun this see it inflating this kind of pattern uh, based on the noise okay it has different modes the static one is you can't change this weight uh, during the simulation however the rest of the three modes that allow you to change the weight dynamically or uh, during the simulation okay uh, next you have these a uh, group of settings the first one is a strength that allows you control the overall inflate strength okay and this is really important setting because with this you can also define the soft collisions by using the file of nodes okay then you have the height step so this is the inflate height per frame it's going to inflate the geometry by this amount on every frame okay next you have the rate that allow you control the speed of the inflating process okay uh, you can see that these settings are field based so you can use a uh, different kind of textures or fall of nodes to control these settings okay next we have the smooth settings it smooths the geometry while inflating okay if i set this to two see it is smoothing less if i make this let's say five it's going to smooth uh, more so these are the number of iterations for the smooth and this is the weight so here you can control the weight with the different textures or you can use the inflate weight this weight as the smooth weight then it's going to limit the smoothening uh, only for the inflating regions after that you have the sync with the rate so when you decrease the rate it's going to also decrease the smoothness okay however if you don't sync this with the rate then it's going to dissolve the inflated details see so if you sync that with the rate then it try to preserve the inflated details of the surface okay last setting is the boundary distance it allows you to define the mask based on the open boundary of the mesh surface see it is not inflating this outer boundary of this mesh surface however if i set this to zero then it's going to inflate the whole geometry whether it is open or closed so with this you can basically exclude the open regions uh, from the inflating process then you have the direction so by default it is inflating along the surface normal however with this vector you can also define your custom direction for the inflating 
so this is really handy when you want to inflate the mesh geometry into a predefined shape so with this uh, you can achieve that let me set this to let's say 0 0.5 and also make this non normalize see it is inflating along the noise direction okay and with this you can also use uh, the field nodes to define different directions okay these nodes and after that you have the self collision and also decrease the smooth iterations so that we can see some of the collisions see these parts are intersecting we can avoid this by using the self collisions so there are two methods one is based on the distance collision and other one is based on the curvature of the geometry so let's use this distance and also point one see now it is not intersecting so it has two mode inflate one is basically a uh, more efficient it going to only detect the collision for the inflating surface however if in your project you want to detect the collision for whole geometry then you should use the geometry mode instead of that inflate mode okay and the next one is a curvature collision it has two modes convex and concave so convex allow you to limit the convex part of the geometry from collision see and this will collide yeah here you can see that so because it is only uh, detecting the collision for the convex part of the geometry then you can also use the concave so by default it is really strong so let me decrease the strength 0.25 see now they are not intersecting so here they are intersecting you can even increase that that is better but we have to even increase that further so basically you can play with this strength and even you can also combine that with the distance collision see and now uh, they are not intersecting next you have the external collisions with the closed meshes okay so here you can use the collection or you can use the geometry so let's add a let's say a sphere and let's bring that here change that to geometry and we want this front side so it's going to detect the collision uh, along the surface normal okay so let's go to the first frame and let me hide this for a moment see we are casting the shape of this sphere and this is really nice because we can even move that uh, during the simulation let's say So this is really handy to create different kind of patterns or shapes uh, while inflating the geometry and you can also define the avoid so it's going to add a small separation uh, between these collision surface and the inflating surface see in this gap so you can add that and then you have the advanced settings the first one is a smooth fall off that is being used uh, for the inflate mode here or you can use that for the shading and the second setting is to smooth the collision mask it basically smooth the output collision mask that you want to use later for the geometry as well as for the shading and this system also come with the inflate info nodes uh, for the geometry nodes as well as for the shader nodes so here you can view the different attributes weight fall off height a boundary mask as well as collision if there is collision okay see and you can smooth that 
Uh, this include system also come with this nice material. So let's add that to this. And then I think we have to also set that uh, with the geometry nodes. So in this, I have shown that how to mix your image texture uh, with uh, your material uh, based on the inflate height. Uh, this is it about the settings. I'm also working on inflate motion graphics series. It will be available soon in that I'll show you how to create really cool looking inflate motion graphics using the extra notes of the geometry notes in Blender 4.5. Now let's talk about the next update for the XPBT solver. So let me show you the first demonstration and then we will see the settings. In this I have enabled the static friction and in this I have disabled the static friction and you can see the difference. See, they are stable. But these particles not settle down. See, they are still juggling. So this is because of the static friction. So this is really handy when you want to fill up some kind of container with these particles. In this update, I have added the static friction and sleep distance uh, for the self collision as well as for the surface collision. Okay. You can enable that according to your project if you want the static friction for the self collision or static friction for the surface collision, basically for this container. For the static friction, first you need to define the uh, friction force, means when the applied force is less than that, then it's going to activate the static friction. And after that, you need to define the force max or friction force max. When the applied force exceeds this threshold, then it will deactivate the static friction and you can also define the sleep distance so basically during the collision when the particle is moving less than this threshold then it will set to a sleep mode so these are the really important updates to create a stable uh, simulations with these particles using xpbd solver node our next update is related to the fall of nodes i have added this new resonance fall of node so that allow you to create this kind of pattern that is similar to the sound plate pattern. So here you can define different kind of modes or you can play with this amplitude. And you can also change the overall length scale. And this is really handy. Uh, so you can use that to displace the geometry like in this kind of pattern. Or you can use that to create the surface curl force. Uh, let me add the surface. So it has generated this surface curl force based on this fall off. I used this to create this kind of uh, simulation for the particles. And the next update is for the field nodes. I have added seven new surface field nodes. So that allow you to directly sample the field from the surface. It was possible in the previous version, but it is not that easy, uh, especially for the new users. You can sample that for the surface using the index, or if you want to sample from the surface, you can use the nearest index or nearest surface modes. So here we are sampling the tangent field uh, from the curve uh, for this surface. Okay, so let me go to the edit mode of this curve, and if I draw the curve on the surface, see these instances are following the tangents of this curve we can draw different kind of shapes for this curve see and you can also smooth this field you can use even a bit tangent or you can use the field so this is really handy like in this case uh, we are using the field for the alignment of these objects along the surface are uh, based on the curve so you can use that for the scattering or you can use uh, this kind of field for the particle simulations to create really cool uh, tangent flows onto the surface i use this kind of approach in this example so they are different types you can use that to get the field from based on the axis curve location object point a shortest path as well as based on the UV map of the surface.
uh, let me connect that to this so it is based on the uv map of the this surface okay so here you can use the shortest path so next update is for the scatter nodes for the scatter nodes i have added the gizmo controls so they are available uh, for the nodes that have inbuilt geometry like circle disk grid line and spiral scatter let me first enable the show gizmo control and if we select the node we can see these controls so they are really handy like you can change the tilt of this you can increase the radius and you can change their rotation okay they are available for different scatter nodes like in this case we have this of other disk here you can increase the radius of the disk change the orientation okay so these are the major updates but i have also done the ui clean and other updates for the rotation nodes so that the extra nodes is future proof so this is it i hope you like this release so if you like then please like and share the video and subscribe to my channel for more updates so thank you for watching see you in the next video happy noding bye